Coming up on All About Android, it's me, Jason Howell, Ron Richards, Florence Ion, and, well, it's just the three of us tonight. We're going to talk all about Google Photos free storage and how that's basically done effective immediately. Uh, the ways that Google supposedly obscured location privacy settings, uh, Xiaomi's ridiculously fast charging, the musky, aka the unreleased Pixel 2 XL that we weren't entirely certain actually existed it sold on ebay walmart is so on and on and then we have two times the normal amount of your emails up next on all about android podcasts you love from people you trust this, this is twit Hello and welcome to All About Android, episode 527, recorded on Tuesday, June 1st, 2021, your weekly source for latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I'm Jason Howell. And I'm Rod Richards. And I'm Florence Ion. Hi, guys. Hello. Hello, Ron. Nice to see you virtually again. Yes, I have adjusted my camera shot for those of you watching the video show at home you have. Uh, to a more. Someone had complained that they didn't like that I was turned. So oh. I listened to them and I rejiggered well, the desk a little. I, said it. Yikes. Uh, I didn't say that person wasn't you, Burke. I didn't say that. <laughs> Burke, you so, qualify uh, as a someone. You're, you're definitely a yeah. someone. Thanks. And I heard you. So, yeah. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. I made a change. Right. I'm, I'm capable of changing. So everyone is capable. So there you go. Ron uh, actually listened to you, Burke. Yes, exactly. That's, for that's once. That's a win. <laughs> I will say I also adjusted my microphone before I connected. So, Bert, you know, and when I came on, Burke said you sound great. So I'm learning. All right. Let's, just took, nice. it just, let's keep it, it up. Just, it just took 10 years. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not only is the camera facing the, you know, like everything facing forward thing better um, for viewers, because like I had that situation in my corner uh, studio set up there for a while where like I had a screen over here and I was facing over here. And yep. it just, you know, it's not only is it better when you when you straighten it out for the viewers, but it's also better for you because then that's like, like well, less, less strain. Well, where I was going to say, actually, because now we're going, this is not all about it. This is all about furniture. But my desk has, it's like a nice wood kind of mid-century modern desk. And there's like a little file cabinet to my lower left. And I was constantly hitting my knees on it. Oh, I was turning yeah. to look. And like, and I was, and the number of times, like my keyboard and mouse are here and the microphone is here. And it just wasn't, so I just took a step back. I did some re readjusting. And here we are. Yeah. Nice. So, Iteration. And I'm all. Got to iterate. And I'm yeah. Iterating. Yeah. Sh yeah. Ship early, ship often, iterate, move fast. Break mm -hmm. things. This is right? a, what other what other cliches. This uh, is Ron's suburban mean? variant. Yeah. Listen, I needed to disrupt exactly. my desk. I was disrupting my desk, and uh, I I'm hashtag hustle. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited. So. <laughs> Your camera has a new daily driver, and it's yep, the way we're is, yep. looking at it right now. Yep, exactly. See, should I uh, face this way so I'm facing you guys, or should I face this way that's comfortable for me? Whatever's that's the question. Yeah, it's got to be. Why can't it be both? Why can't it be both? Yeah, that's that's a good point. That's what I did. So, you do uh, but I did that. I did that in the name of Android, so that I, you know, I would be comfortable to tell you about the latest in Android news. Yes. Which is so why we it. are here today on yes. this week where I struggled to fill three blocks of news. <laughs> Slow week, post So. <laughs> yeah, you know, sometimes the IO bubble has kind of come totally. back down to earth. Right? Yeah, it kind of feels that way a little bit. We're in the IO slump. But sometimes I end up like kind of doubting myself a little bit. I'm like, well, maybe I'm just not finding them cuz really there's not like nine things that I can choose that I can find to to talk about. I can only find six things. I I wonder if I just wasn't looking in the right places. But at the same time, it gives Looking us an opportunity right to do what we enjoy doing uh, in, in moments like this, especially have more feedback in the episode. Yeah. So that's like mm -hmm. basically if you, if you wrote an email, you are twice as likely to get into today's show. So that's going to make some of you happy. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, <laughs> I think all the emails that wrote in got in this week. So if you did, congratulations. Um, anyways, <laughs> why, <you. laughs> why don't we start with some news right off the top? Some of the news that there actually was. Well, now that you're primed for bad news, uh, I'm no longer doing this for free. Oh. And no no more storage either. Oh. Oh, there you I, go. We're going to have to start you paying Burke what, for Burke, the news. Burke ask bumper. for what you're worth, girlfriend. <laughs> that is right. Like, you walk in there and you ask for what you're worth. I, for one, support this. Yeah. 
Well, Bert, Bert just get in line with the with the latest trends of uh, of subscription premium things. Uh, <laughs> So this is all because we're all making a reference to the fact that as I referred well, to uh, right. when I texted Jason earlier today, Google Photos Apocalypse is happening. Yes. Uh, June 1st today, Google Photos free storage is over. So that ship has sailed. Bye bye. Uh, who rolled out oh, the yeah. Google Photos? Was it Oster? Was it Oster Lowe or was it the other guy? Who was the guy who was really excited about Google Photos? What was that guy's name? Remember, it was right, right around the time of Google Plus. Yeah, no, this was, uh, was that, was it Vic and Dotra, maybe? Huh? It I might can't have remember. Been Vic and Dotra. I, I honestly, yeah. I can't remember. Uh, um, I'm, I'm trying to, to flex my, um, my Google foo right now. Your but, knowledge. Yeah. 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 Anyway, so let's maybe you can find that while I'm talking about yeah. this. But yeah, I think it was the, Vic and Dotra. I think it was Vic and Dotra because right around, right, right around the time of Google Plus and Google Photos and it was great and it all worked together and all this sort of stuff. And a big part of it was that it was free. And as part of it being free, you got you got free high quality uploads, so you're able to upload stuff at full res and store it there. Um, that's over, so no more free high quality uploads for most users. Uploads begin to count against your Google account storage. So those of you who, if you look at the bottom left of your Gmail and you see how much percentage uh, storage you've taken up on Google, photos will count towards that. Um, and photos uploaded to your library prior to today, to today do not count against that quota only for new images going forward. So there's not like retroactive billing or anything like that. It's just like, this is the brave new world. You've got a storage quota for Google that is Gmail, G Drive, Google Photos. It's all under one roof. And if you need to expand that storage, guess what? You can pay like everybody else does. Yep. So, um, so yep. does, this, does this change how much we love Google Photos for you, either of you? Because Google Photos is one of those like, Right. Is that, that's one of those like gems. It's, of It's Google's one of. Crowd, yeah, right? I, I consider yeah. it definitely one of the premium premier uh, Google services. I mean, it's definitely one of the ones that I've used the most and yeah. valued the most, which is why I, I as I've like. So so basically right now I'm working on a hands on tech episode that's going to go that's going to publish tomorrow where I take the Synology uh, DS920 plus network attacks attached storage. Bless you. And I figure out how to basically replicate the functionality of Google Photos on my own network attached storage. Um, and, you know, and it's not it's not impossible. I, 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 I don't even want to say that it's like difficult because out, outright it's really not difficult. It's very time consuming and it's not a one to one replica of what we've come to experience with Google Photos. Then I realized at the end of that, like, okay, so I go through all the heavy lifting of, of trying to, you know, do this. Um, gosh, maybe it just makes sense to continue paying for Google Photos because if I've loved it as much as I have, which I do, then it like, why not? Why not pay for a service that's, that's actually pretty point. amazing? You know. And that's the point. And that's yep. the point. Everything is about services now, and I, you know, a lot of a lot of these companies make the most money off of services. So offering you all this cloud, which it already has all this indexed cloud, which you're just feeding the machine so that you can have a better search engine for your photos. And so for us, the transaction is like perfect. And that's why we keep paying for this. Um, even me, like I went to look in my Google one account the other day, I got away with paying for a hundred gigs this far, like this long since mm -hmm. I started paying for it, what, in 2010. And now I'm almost to that capacity because I was using that one plus eight for what, like eight, nine months. And just the photos accumulated from that set me over the limit in yeah. my photos. Oh, quota. Yeah. So it's real. Um, I know that we're saying that this is only going to affect pixel users. This, uh, you know, the subs new subscription model, whatever that Google photos is adopting, but the writing was kind of on the wall and the pixel is such a small percentage of the phones that totally. people use. Most Android users are using Samsung devices. Let's, let's look yeah. at the numbers. That's, Absolutely. that's yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So by the way, I was looking into it, trying to figure out Vic and Dotra left Google plus and he was replaced by Bradley Horowitz who took over photos and streams, which was stripped out from Google plus. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. 
So I think it was Bradley Horowitz who may have announced that. I was trying to find like an, an actual announcement by him, but he was the yeah. one that took it over when all that switch happened. Yeah. So just a little tidbit there. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I think, I mean, I've been paying uh, for the Google One subscription, the uh, 200 gig plan, which is only $299 a month. It's like, that's yeah, I'm not pay, I'm that paying expensive. For, I'm, paying for the, I'm paying for that too. Yeah. You know, the one I pay more for the Play Pass. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> well, that's an interesting comparison. Yeah, which one do you feel like you get more value out of then? I just feel like they're both. Oh my god! Like I, you know, go in your QuickBooks and do a search for how many times Google charges you mm-hmm. in a year. Mm-hmm. They are making a lot of money off of me. They're making a just, lot of money off of you. Yeah, just because I find Google the Pass and... worth it now. Yeah. Now that I have Mona. Granted, she's only like 16 months, but now that she's, you know, I'm starting to kind of put together little phone devices for her to have in the car with like little apps. Yeah. I find more use out of the Play Pass because there's so many kids, there's so much kids content on there. And you don't have to buy each and yeah, it's each just, and every yeah, one I just pay $5 yeah. a month and totally. it unlocks all of it. Yeah. So uh, subscription life hashtag. Uh, subscription life um sub life yeah that's what it is i mean this is the new i I, i've said it on the show before but i remember when i in like 2007 when i was moving to san francisco and i was hanging out with my dad and we were talking about web 2.0 and stuff like that my dad's like you know we are all gonna die a death of a thousand micropayments Mm -hmm. yeah yeah like every he called it he was um he was prescient in in that and that's the way everything was going and that's what happens now you just get charged a little here a little there and that's why things like Truebill and like google pay and stuff like that that are um, was it Truebill or whatever the services that like analyze your bank account to tell you what you're because you might, might not even know what you're paying for because yeah. it's so easy to be like three ninety nine, two ninety nine, six ninety nine. It adds up. So make it a habit every couple, you know, do it like Labor Day weekend or this past Memorial Day weekend. Take some time out to look at your bank account statement and make sure the things you're paying for are actually want. Yeah, I think Google I think Google Photos absolutely and Google Storage absolutely falls underneath that catch all. Oh, yeah. The, 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 the oh, yeah. having this. Having this data mine of stuff available anywhere that I can share. Me and my wife have the and my sister have photo sharing set up, so we take pictures of the kids and anybody else, and it's all in there. It's all in the mix. I can easily highlight photos and make a book out of it. Like it, it, it's a great service. And and I don't. Again, it's like we say support your devs. That also means Google. Yeah, it also sure. means you know people who are doing stuff. And it's a if it's a valuable tool that you are using, if it's a valuable service, pay for it. That's how it goes. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, this this whole NAS uh, project has been pretty illuminating um, for me because I was like, really, I was just kind of curious, like what would go into it and like, yeah. you know, what what is the process like and is it a good, like, would it be a good replacement? And uh, I'm not certain that I've like decided or you're just going to have to watch it when it's done um, in order to find the, the final uh, result of that. But it really feels like the more I scrutinize the the switch to using a NAS over Google Photos, it's kind of the value proposition. It's it's like it's not about value. It's maybe more about just like owning owning the 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 mechanism this... behind where you store those photos, right? But when you're talking about value, like with Google Photos, like like you said, accessible everywhere. Our, the AI um, you know, magic that's happening behind the scenes is top notch. Um, yep. It's it's also a cloud destination, so it's it's not a backup in its own right. But I'm I'm actually considering having the NAS and still keeping and paying for Google yeah. Photos because then I do yeah. have a backup situation. But right? the NAS yeah. becomes the backup, and like and and the thing about it is is that this is very similar to the conversation Jason we had about music. Mm-hmm. Oh, totally. Yes. You Absolutely. know, with the, with the death of Google Play Music and the emergence of YouTube Music and reevaluating this and decide like and what's funny is that here in that art conversation, I, and I will everyone in the chat room or on Discord or whatever is probably screaming right now, but I will be the first to admit that in the music situation, go local, store my own music, have an ass, have an app that I can access it with. That's the choice. But for photos, Google Photos is the choice, and you don't need to be one or the other at all times for every sort of thing. But like. The, the, the magic that YouTube Music or Spotify or anything else gave me for my music, I felt as if was not worth the price, whereas the magic that Google Photos gives me is worth that price. Mm-hmm. That yeah. makes sense. 
laptop. Yep, yep. I don't even know that I mentioned on the show that I'm back on YouTube Music. I, I had switched to oh. Spotify to try to to make the move there, and I think that maybe we talked a little bit about the Google Homes just causing so much issues with my Spotify account and the different yeah. uh, members of our family. And ultimately at the end, that was, it's, that was its undoing for us. Like it just happened time and time again. I couldn't figure it out. And finally my wife was just like, this isn't working. I'm like, you're right. It's not working. Like at least with the YouTube music family account, like we knew that we could all play, but yeah, anyways, I don't want to go off on a tangent, like, but I like the, the honesty between you and your wife when something isn't working. It reminds <laughs> me of, um, uh, me and my wife were struggling with sleep training our kids or whatever. We were trying something else and she might've been in the room with the kid or I was or whatever, but I just texted her, this isn't working. <laughs> she just came out and she's like the relationship or what we're doing to get the kids <laughs> oh, to sleep. Yeah. Like, and I'm like, no, no, explain, the kids. <laughs> explain yourself. What exactly is not they working? Never just randomly text your partner. This isn't working. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a, that sets off yeah, lots of alarm that. bells. Yes. So. Yeah. Recipe for disaster there. <laughs> So anyways, yeah, so it sounds like we all we all kind of agree as far as this is concerned, like even even with the knee jerk reaction when we first heard this news, I'm sure that I was a little fearful of like, oh, wait a minute, they're pulling the rug out. I'm seeing some folks in chat uh, and discord. Cousin of Jai even said you never get as much functionality as AI Megadon Google, but you will never have to worry about being held hostage. And that's another part of it, too, is people feel like it's the rug being pulled out from under them and they're being pushed into a position that they didn't think they were going to end up in when Google was promising free unlimited. Now the rules have changed. And that really, at the end of the day, it's their service. It's their servers. They can make that choice. That's where moving this, this media into your own hands becomes more valuable yep. than, you know, the other stuff. So yeah, everybody's and that's probably going to come We offer here at all about Android <laughs> is storing your photos for you. Well, you know, telling you about all this stuff. Telling you. Okay, informing you about yeah, yeah your options. informing you. I was like, are we starting our own fo photo service? Uh, <laughs> photo Good idea. Listen, <laughs> Maybe I... now's the time. Yeah, I... Mm, <laughs> no. I'm kind of looking into climate impacts of that. Mm, yeah, mm, totally. Mm, Maybe mm. not. Should we uh, move on to something a little more jovial? Sure. All right. Um, and of course, when I'm talking about Jovial, I'm talking about emoji. Uh, Android 12 is bringing with it new emoji, as most new versions of Android do. So it's always a fun time for us emojiholics, which I am. Great way to communicate. So the emoji graph has noted 389 design changes after the library was revamped in Android 11. So in many cases, a lot of the images that you're going to see in Android 12 will be just more simplified from those design changes that came through in Android 11. But in others, they might also be completely major shifts. As we've noticed from version to version, the emoji folks are always fine tuning those emojis because nobody can agree if the turtle should smile if the turtle should even have a mouth, I can understand. Those are big arguments. So Totally. Some of the biggest yeah. arguments of our day related to Android 12 and emoji. Mm -hmm. Also, so I would I'm like to stop oh. saying all this blob hate that has been like permeating throughout Twitter lately. I understand that you're not a fan of Android out there, but you don't need to hate on my blobs, man. Yeah. Don't let just shh, let people like what they like. It's okay. If, if I There's wanna... so many emoji options to choose from. You don't need to even be aware of the blobs. Yeah, I don't go I, around and be like, yeah. oh, those Twitter, those Twitter emoji yeah. are so mm, not Unblobby. telling what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah. Do you miss the blobs, Flo? Yes and no. I think the. I mean, listen, I follow Jennifer Daniel on Twitter, so I see she it's a emoji chairhead, I think, and um. She's on the emoji chair. I just forgot which uh, position she in. she's in. But she posts a lot of the pictures and the things that like yeah, she's chair. working on with regards to emoji. Yeah, Thank chair you, at Emoji Kitchen. Mm -hmm. And she also, you know, works at Google. And so I, uh, I really like what they're doing with the emoji. There is a lot of thought that goes into these little, you know, pictures because they're supposed to have a universal language effect. And I would say... Part of the reason we love emoji is because they are universal. Um, 
you know, I can yeah. use these things with my cousins and they know exactly what I'm trying to say. It's, it's little things. It's so, the little things. I don't know that blobs would have had the same effect, but they're fun. K- keep them. Keep them as like graphics. Yeah. I, th- I think I miss the blobs. Sometimes I'm, I look at the current emojis and they kind of look like blobs, but they're just not as blobby, I suppose. Um, yeah, I guess, you know, you know what I'm realizing? I really don't have a whole lot of, uh, I don't really spend a lot of time missing emoji. I kind of don't care. Yeah. You know why? It's because um, it might just be because you don't, like, it's not part of your language. And I don't mean I don't, that. Yeah, I you know how to say that like a. I don't use them very often. You're right. I really don't. I the only time I ever really use them, um, it, often usually if I use them, it's because like I'm typing out something and then an emoji appears there, and I'm like, oh, I'll just hit that then. Um, I would like fair. to say that I really like the new sunrise emoji. Oh, oh not too bad. But nice. the rest of them aren't. That's that pretty good. nice. Yeah, that's a nice. That's a nice difference. It's just interesting to see, like, that you can track society's development through the iteration yeah. of emoji. So, yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's our um, histograms. Histographs. <laughs> yeah, we're putting them up I on the I learned that in sixth wall. grade, which was quite a long time ago, so I forgot <laughs> how to say them. Hieroglyphs. Hieroglyphs. There we go. That, that makes, yeah. That I'm makes sorry sense. to the culture that I just offended. It's okay. Um Finally, we have a report here. Um, You may remember last year, Google was sued in Arizona around location data collection. Um, This is a story that we definitely talked about on the show back then where, um, you know, the charges were that Google was still tracking location even when the user opts out or turns off location the truth is that android has a number of different ways that it tracks location and the user you know that isn't always clear to the user well now apparently some docs from that case have been unsealed thanks to the freedom of information act and it's a little more damning uh in that regard as well the docs seem to show how google purposefully made privacy settings more difficult to find in settings uh too many users supposedly were using them prior to this relocation google the report claims saw this as a problem and then worked to make them harder to locate uh the documents also show how google could figure out like the the ways the mechanics of google figuring out location data and attaching it to an account even when the device had been fully opted out of that kind of tracking uh so for example it could recognize two users who were Uh, in the same house or the same location, extrapolate the home address based on the Google Maps information and the Wi-Fi usage. So kind of triangulating other information that they're getting to still figure out location, even if the user had opted out. And Google, and this one's, you know, kind of even further down the the first example that I gave, uh, also pushed phone makers like LG, rest in peace, uh, to make their privacy settings harder to find as well so just some interesting insight into the the, you know the the story as far as um, google being unclear with android and and uh, location sharing which Hmm. i mean i'm sure anyone on this panel and many people that uh you know listen to the shows that we do here at twit is probably like yeah well no duh these companies you know use any any signals they can to their advantage uh, to make money and to you know keep the lights on, so I'm I'm personally not surprised that this is the the case, but um, I don't know. Should I be surprised? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, are we are we a little too used to uh, to too used to these kind of things where the company says they're doing one thing and they're uh, actually doing something else? What do you guys? We think? are. Yeah, we are. Yeah, I do. I think I think we're a little desensitized to it at this point. Yeah. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Uh, it's it, it's interesting because it's like, I, yeah, I agree with you. I do think we're desensitized. I also think that um, the location stuff is interesting because it enriches your experience with a lot of things that are going mm-hmm. on. Like at least in terms of mm-hmm. you know, like you know, like just going into Google Maps and typing Shake Shack and getting a list of the Shake Shacks that are nearby me because it knows where I am is immensely helpful and immensely great. You know, and sure. and, and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. But when you think it's off and it's not, that's when it becomes the problem, right? Yeah. Like the, it, it's the misleading aspect of it. And 
the apps that that actually accurately or specifically use your location in a way to share with other people that give people the heebie-jeebies, you know, begs the question of like, well, what about the app that's grabbing my location and I don't know what it's doing with it? Like, why do you, you know, how many times do we do that? Like when they were working through all the, the permission stuff, we're like, why does that app need this permissions? Like, why, do, why does the phone app need my location? Right. Right. Like, you know, like stuff yeah, like totally. that and, and not, not making it clear what the app is doing with those permissions or, or sometimes how those permissions are bundled with other permissions that the developer needs in order to unlock some other bit of functionality right so right. Oh, it's yeah. confusing it's confusing for a lot of people it is so. especially because when you take like location data there are a number of different facets of a phone that can surface some sort of usable yep. information around location when the user pulls down their quick settings and sees a location icon that's either lit up or not lit up I think the majority of users who don't really, you know, spend a lot of time scrutinizing their technology would think, and I think rightfully so, that if they unchecked that location button, they're not being tracked by location anymore. And the the, the reality is, it's a technicality. And Google's saying, well, we aren't locating you via GPS, and that's what that switch is for. Mm -hmm. But there are other ways in the settings if you want to go truly dark, and you didn't do those, so the onus is on you. And I think that's kind of unfair. Like... I'm I'm sorry. The ma the majority of users would make that assumption, um, and it's and these documents kind of back up that Google was okay with that. <laughs> was yeah. okay with kind yeah. of you know pushing the the boundary lines a little bit. So well, which is, you know, which is and, and it's like kind of like it's a means to an ends at that point, right? They're like they yep. they see it's a risk assessment. Yeah. So. Oh sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you're yeah. right. You're right. It it absolutely is. Which they can afford to take. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Although, you know, they're coming under more more scrutiny uh, in the EU and uh, also here, but definitely in the EU. So it's a risk that they've taken and uh, they're making changes now. I don't you know, I don't know how effective those changes are going to be. Android 12 certainly brings privacy even more to the forefront. So Google is making some changes as far as that's all concerned. But we'll see if it's uh, if it's enough. We uh, gotta we yeah. gotta start talking about if these changes though are getting to the people that they really need to get to because <laughs> right it's easy for us to say that they're making more privacy changes they're making things more transparent but like we're us we know this stuff really darn well what about everybody else well and and the the ages old uh, complaint or or you know counterpoint which is that this is effective on Android 12. And who the heck has Android 12 for the next couple also, of years? Yep. Not that many people, like in the grand scheme of Android releases. So, platform um, problems. Yep. Yes, indeed. All right. Well, with that said, uh, up next, we've got some hardware news for you. The hardest of hardware news. <laughs> This is neat if you like battery or rather if you like battery that that charges fast fast, fast battery that's fast what you like. charging battery yeah. if, if you like mm -hmm. life in the fast charging battery lane then you're gonna love this Xiaomi uh, apparently is out to set some world records they're like we know you like a battery that charges fast check this out they used a modified Mi 11 Pro which has a battery capacity of 4,000 milliamp hours and a 200 watt wired hypercharge system, 200 watts, holy cow, uh, wow. to charge the battery from empty to full, and it only took eight minutes. Eight minutes from zero to 100. That is redonkulous. That's me. crazy. <laughs> That's okay. just bananas. That is bananas. That's Because at that point, that changes like, because the thing is, is that like, how we, use, I don't know how everyone uses your phone and all this sort of stuff, but like, I'm basically, going to bed and plugging my phone in overnight and leaving it plugged in and it's great. It goes black and white after yeah. 1030, yeah. right? Like, which is great. And it just sits there. And then at 5 AM I wake up and I take it off the charger and I go through my day and then I do the whole thing again. You move to this kind of scenario and you charge your phone in eight minutes. Then what do I do? Do I just? I mean, I guess it's it's you just put it down, right? And it will, and and the Android controls. You gotta put it will, at the other side of the room, Ron. You can yeah, no, no longer no, have I, it near you. 
No, no, I know. But like my fear is like if I charge it after eight minutes and then unplug it and then have let it sit overnight, I'm going to wake up to 50% charge or 60% charge. But I guess the new Android stuff keeps it from draining if you're not using it, right? Like, isn't it doing the battery control? I don't know. It just, this changes the paradigm of everything. That's all I'm saying. Fair. So, yeah. Yeah, Fair. I mean, I mean, <laughs> if, if this was norm, uh, that would be pretty awesome. I mean, the, the challenge with a system like this is that it's not a, it's very likely not a uni well, universal charger, right? Like, this isn't the charger that you just have on in your pocket probably this is this is something that's going to do you good when you're at the house it's a very specific type of charger for that specific type of phone um so when we get to a point to where this is just the way battery chargers are if that happens that's going to be pretty pretty awesome but i do wonder about the the longevity of the battery health which is always the concern that comes up with these really fast charging solutions is like okay yeah you can do that with a battery but is it good for the battery it, on a long-term basis if this is a phone you're going to keep for two three four years and you're always charging your battery that fast is is that going to deplete its its um lasting ability you know from a life perspective see right. i went a little darker uh oh i was thinking about everybody getting back on planes again with really fast charging batteries yeah and then i thought about the scary things about batteries on a plane uh, like them oh, exploding. What, like the explode, the exploding batteries. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Just, and you know, fast charging bat. You know, I don't know. I'm just my brain is going a little dark. Yeah, Sorry. I mean, I would imagine if uh, if these kind of chargers with these kinds of phones result in uh, more explosions, <laughs> exploding no, I know, phones than normal. But... Yeah, we, we listen. We okay. We kid, but we didn't. Vis nobody thought the Note Seven thing would happen. So no. somebody's gonna try and make this battery. Oh, but it thing did. happen. And oh, but it did. I don't know. Um, <laughs> and guys. It's, it's not only wired charging. By the way, they uh, they had a 120 watt wireless charging solution that only took 15 minutes to charge up from zero See? to 100. See, there's some sort of energy component this could all go really bad i'm just saying maybe not rooted in science 100 percent rooted in science my concerns 50 percent charge in three and a half minutes 10 percent charge in 44 seconds 10 percent 10 percent in 44 seconds that's 44 that's insane. seconds they're like that's okay insane. go 44 <laughs> seconds that's yeah that's, that's i mean that's awesome. totally like when you look at your phone and you're down to like 15 percent and you need to leave in 10 minutes yeah. Right. Yeah. You could literally charge your phone in 10 minutes and in eight minutes and be at 100 percent. Like that's yeah. like you could awesome. you could quickly plug in your phone, go to the bathroom, put your shoes on. And by the time you're ready, you have enough juice to get out. Ah. Like that's. Oh, my that's God. Amazing. Could you imagine only having to make one stop before getting on the plane? Well, the I mean, the one plus nine and the one plus eight. I'm trying to remember. Is it the what is their charging solution called? The the uh, rapid dash dash charger dash. Is it the dash charger? The hyper something <laughs> hyper dash, dash the charger the plus, way, which is where my brain is pro at. Um, B. I don't know. That's that's just a guess. Um, anyways, their charging solution if you have the right charger and the right phone, if if I remember correctly, that was like zero to a hundred in like slightly over thirty minutes, yeah. which it gets was, so hot. Is hot, does it? I, I guess I haven't noticed that it heats up. But I haven't been it there does. when I'm doing that. It gets so. really hot. Still that's pretty good. That's pretty darn awesome um to get a full charge in around thirty minutes. And that's well it also gets hand. really hot if you're like me and playing emulating a game well, while yeah. it's charging. Yeah, that would do it. Yeah. Anyways, I'm looking forward to if this ever happens to come out on a factory phone. This was all just a test to show that they could. This is why well, this is a Xiaomi flexing its muscles. It always does that. That's like its thing, though. That's yeah. what it's, you know, yeah. that's how it makes its name for itself. There I mean, that's, they're they're emerging to take over the LG research and development you know yeah right. Yeah, that's, right. <laughs> right i mean that, that's what it is like anything interesting now is coming out of xiaomi show me someone else that is doing more interesting stuff what was the thing last week that it was um uh they had the, the, the triple yeah the fold the, mo the modular phone that was xiaomi oh, right the modular that we talked about phone. last week yeah so like they're doing cool stuff nobody else is high five xiaomi i yeah. just wish i could get it here so yeah uh, i know yeah 
There you go. Well, there was the news actually recently that all of the uh, the trade limits on Xiaomi related to the trade limits that were placed on Huawei uh, have been lifted. So who knows? Maybe Xiaomi will finally uh, bring their phones to the U.S. I keep thinking that's going to happen inevitably at some point, but it still hasn't. We've been talking about them for years. Do they so. even need us at this I point? I don't know. Like, they they just, I, just yeah, might not. It might be more trouble than it's worth for Xiaomi, for yeah. Xiaomi you know? Yeah. <sighs> well, let's talk about a total blast from the past in Pixel Leak land. <laughs> I think we should do that. We don't have any new pixel leaks to talk about, but this is a blast from the past of an old pixel leak. So remember back to the pixel two, this is how far we're going. There were actually reports that both LG and HTC had both made an XL variant. Ultimately the LG one was the one that went out. So if you bought a pixel two XL, it was made by LG, but there's a prototype version of the HTC variant codenamed Musky that hit eBay. It was basically a larger version of the Pixel 2 because it was made right. by HTC. The 2 and was made the by And the Pixel 2, the small one, was made by HTC. So side by side, they looked like they would have been a nice pair in a bunch of promos. <laughs> and that's about it. Now, who the heck knows? Yeah, I mean... I mean, the Pixel 2... You know. Yeah, Pixel 2 was a pretty awesome. Uh, P- the, sorry, the 2 XL. That was the one that I had. I didn't have the 2. I had the 2 XL. But that was a pretty awesome Pixel. As far as the Pixels were concerned, that was one of the best ones. I know. I remember you really liked that XL. I remember a lot of people really liked that XL. I remember thinking the 2 was really small from what I was used to. Yeah. But I have to tell you, the Pixel 5 gives me the same feel. As the 2? Just in its in its smallness. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in its pocketability, it's very nice being able to put a phone in a little clutch again. I'll tell you. Yeah. It's big phones don't fit. Uh, it's also worth noting, by the way, that this was the first pixel that brought us all the features we love that are standard now, including, well, actually, I don't know if we have active edge anymore. Yeah. I, th- I think, I yeah. think that's, that's on the way out. I, I can't remember if it's on the pixel five. I always deactivated active edge. So I made it in a, a deactive edge. When I have. Yeah. <laughs> Deactivated. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for, uh, back to the Pixel 2. What's, first great about AI that joke, has... what's, what's great about that joke is its simplicity. <laughs> it's true. I appreciate you, your appreciation. <laughs> Sorry, Did Flo. you... I, no, it's fine. I appreciate the joke, too. I was trying us to have us not go off topic, but I was going to say the squeeze feature is something that's actually an accessibility feature I didn't think about that a lot of people rely on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So that's going away. Um, anyway, I remember the code name Musky. That's what this was called. Yep. I remember it floating around. Uh, and there's an eBay listing for it. So if you want to go gawk at it, you could do that. Yeah, the I think the list equivalent of gawking. The listing has uh, has closed, has ended. It Let's says see. Um, rare Correcting. prototype, untested, one phone, five hundred eighty dollars. That's it. Shipping twenty five dollars. It says the listing has ended. Let's see here. Um, but does it say that like it someone bought it or they? I just feel like it, it wouldn't tell you that far. I it feel would, like that's it wouldn't that's say a bought. privacy. Well, it doesn't need to tell me who bought it, but oh, it's okay. It does say sold for five hundred eighty dollars, so it did it did sell. But where? Who who bought it? I want to uh, know so I can. I don't know. Well, that would be the privacy thing. We'll never know until someone appears on one of the blogs doing a full review of it, which is almost guaranteed to happen. I know. Point. Countdown. Put it on yeah. the timer. Yeah, but yeah, that was a that was a great phone. The two XL, the the one that LG did, uh, was was pretty awesome. Um, now playing, one of my favorite Pixel features was on there. Yep. Yeah, pretty cool stuff. Ron, uh, I don't know whether you realize this or not, but at this point, oh, because do. of the way that you pronounce it, uh, you're on oh, the yep. you're on the on beat. Uh, it's very very clever that that's the direction you took it in. But yes, as <laughs> everyone knows. We are immensely fascinated by Walmart and their technology uh, products with the on 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 label on O N N. Um, and we talked a couple of weeks ago about the fact that they had a Roku-like streaming stick coming out. And those of you watching the video can see a photo <gasps> of of it out in the wild, the on 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 watch. Um, so uh, basically, their Android TV streaming stick is now available in stores. There are two different devices. 
both ship with the G10 remote. $25 gets you a 1080p streaming dongle, and $29 gets you a 4K-capable puck device. So listen, for just $4, you can jump from 1080p to 4K, yeah. which is okay. crazy, crazy. Walmart has not... These. Pu- bu- but here's the thing, Flo. Walmart has not publicly announced those devices yet, although they're appearing on shelves. So you might want to rush out to your local Walmart, Walmart and get them for fear that they're put out on shelves in error or before they're supposed to. They're a hot commodity right now. Oh, yeah. People are going to be snapping these up left, right, and center. For twenty four ninety nine, you can get that on a a ten eighty p dongle or lower in the photo is the puck I believe um, that we saw, um, and that does four K, which is crazy. Listen, I'll tell you what: there if is. if you yeah, those there's the puck for those of you watching the video. If you all right, I'm I'm gonna censor my New York East Coast bias. If you live somewhere where you shop at Walmart a lot and you're looking for a streaming device. And 25 bucks is really attainable. Like no matter what your socioeconomic level might be. Um, and it's running Android TV. I, I, I don't, I, I can't, I mean, we can make fun of Walmart all we want, but I don't see anything to make fun of with this. Yeah. No, I mean, listen, cool. Walmart wants to be the entry level Amazon here. Um, that's, the, that's what they're doing with all these devices. Like I'm just looking through the list of, of sp- on and then the stuff that you can get. Did you guys know they have a Roku wireless subwoofer home theater system? They have a Roku projection projector. Wait, is that on is that Anana or Roku? Yeah. On and Anana. It's with Roku. <laughs> but oh, I'm, wait, bringing, so the, I'm, I'm bringing this up. I'm, yeah. I'm bringing this up to, to mention the moves that Walmart is making with like these third yeah. parties. And so Google obviously would be one of them, I'm assuming. And I want to get my hands on this and see like how good it is because i'm starting to you know i'm starting to see the limitations with my right. google tv so, so i just yeah flow i do the same i'm on the, I'm on the walmart website and i'm browsing hardware and i filtered by on and and i just want everyone to be clear of the brand standards when you're talking about on and it is lowercase o n n period because right. if you look on their website, they've got Samsung, iTech, LG, Logitech, but Anana is lowercase with a period. Uh, but yeah, Flo, I'm seeing the the rugged Bluetooth speaker with LED lighting. They, they have an Anana Dolby Atmos soundbar with wireless subwoofer. They have a Anana 5-watt wireless key, uh, key, char- uh, key charger. Like, There's some this serious is Anana action Rolling TV going on stand here. for $80. Yeah. Yeah. There's some serious on and a tech going on Ooh, here. They have a party think, speaker with LED lighting. Yeah, I said bucks. that the rugged blue, the rugged Bluetooth. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, because they have a lot of Bluetooth speakers yeah. on here. Yeah. Um, wow. I'm just saying that on and a and a might be where it's added. Da, 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 da. Um, because <laughs> I expect that from I'm me, Ron. I don't expect that from you. Oh, well, my dad. I yeah, it's true. Do. It's true. You're, you're learning. But, um, you're learning. But no, I mean, this is this is. I mean, it's fascinating. It's and and they they are clearly figured out a hardware pipeline. They have a six foot USB C cable in white. By Anna Nana. Can't hear. Can't hear mm. you, Burke. You're, yeah. you're yelling at me. They make inkjet cartridges. <laughs> oh. They make Anna Nana ink. That's amazing. <laughs> Anna Nana ink. Yeah, this is this is Walmart's pipeline. They know what they're doing here. Yeah. It's. Yeah. It is on a na na na. It is yeah. on a na 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 na. Man, they get a lot of play on our show, by the way. They do. I, I know. Really I don't do. know if they deserve it, but well, so here's the I think here's the thing. Now here's the thing. We've talked about rugged phones. We've talked about gaming phones. Are you in the all about Android community, and you are you a loyal Ananana customer? Like, do you have the Ananana rugged speaker, or do you have the Ananana keyboard gaming keyboard? Yes. <laughs> if Let you us use, know. If you use any or the Ananana gaming LED mouse pad, do you use that? I don't. Um, if you use any Ananana tech, uh, Ooh, please write in. Gaming send mouse photos. pad. It lights up. Yes, it's right up your alley, Flo. Oh, way. and on a an, uh, USB podcast microphone and uh, that for twenty bucks. That's <laughs> this is something. <laughs> this is something. I okay, the most who wants expensive... to get on this train? Just like if you want to buy something for twenty bucks, I'm not saying nobody's reimbursing you. This is all completely in your own 
volition. But if you want to buy an on and in a thing for 20 bucks and let us know how it works. <laughs> Although I'm afraid because if, I don't want anything like God forbid to have no like, you know, exploding wires or something. But yeah, we are I not responsible Walmart for whatever happens have to your on and product. I mean, this is uh, unbelievable. There's so much on and in the tech. There's at least I'm looking here. There's a 25 there's, pages of products. Yeah, this, this is a you lot. You can get an on and in an indoor HD TV antenna. Yeah, like they, they make they make, <laughs> they make although it's out of stock on the website, but they make 90 minute audio cassette blank tapes. <laughs> wow. They, yeah, wow. They make some old tech. Actually, I noticed yeah. that they have like they're the only ones having DVD players. Like yeah. little handheld ones for I, kids. I saw a little portable CD player, an Anana portable yeah. CD player. And, and it was actually the same cost as the uh, streaming. Uh, the no, streaming if they could just make a dongle. decent tablet. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I mean, actually. But it's not about, and that's why Google TV is going on those tablets, guys. Cousin of Jaw yeah. in, in the chat says, I have an Anana tablet that I use as a dedicated security cam viewer. So, you know, like if yeah. you're getting the tablet for wow. a specific use, it as might be good. As long as you don't have enough. to do press, you know, switch apps or press yeah. any buttons or <laughs> yeah, <Did you laughs> anything. Know, set it and forget did it. You know and it that works. Anana has, has the Anana true wireless earbuds in white. And they're basically AirPod ripoffs, like completely. <laughs> How much are they? <laughs> yeah, they are. Nineteen eighty-eight. Nineteen eighty-eight. Nice. Twenty dollars. You can have the on and the true wireless earbuds, oh, not false wireless they sound earbuds. So awesome. They're true. They hey, sell a thirty-dollar you know? portable boombox with CD player and FM radio. Like, what year is this? Where? where how? Like. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, but that's the oh. thing, guys. We live in a bubble, yeah. and the, and people who shop at Walmart like oh, don't they? This is the stuff. Like, okay, I'm not trying to make a demographic. It's really I'm hard not to. Say, to Paul. I'm right there with you. I'm right there with you. It's hard not to. Yeah, Walmart oh, is out. Listen, guys, I'm in the suburbs. I live 20 minutes away from two different WalMarts. All right, but so I I get it. It's just that there's a lot of people oh who get everything at Walmart, and so if you're getting everything there. You might as well get Just the tech get that you're still the legacy tech you're still using. Right. Uh, they haven't. This is so. This is a blast from the past. And flow. This might be. This. I don't know. You might be on the cusp of this. But Jason and Burke definitely. You guys use this as well. They have the Ananana cassette adapter, yeah. which is the cassette that you put in a yes. car stereo with a cable coming out of it that you can plug into something. You can get that for five dollars and thirty eight cents. Oh man, I'm I'm seeing another on in a car cassette adapter with Bluetooth wireless technology for nineteen eighty eight. So if you want to like that's upgrade a fancy it a little, thing. You put that in your nineteen ninety nine Passat, and it's like a brand new yeah, car. Yeah, totally. Passat, more like a Tercel. <laughs> Jeez, this is uh this is an interesting uh, ca- collection of technology. It really is. And now you can add a Android TV to the mix. Yep. So. There so you go. So I need to find out if I can get my hands on either, because I'm seeing a UHD streaming box coming up, as well as that little dongle that is supposed to be a Chromecast, Google yep. TV Chromecast situation. So I, oh, wait, the wait, problem wait, is wait, I can't wait, look wait, online wait. to see what they have in stock. So I think I have to actually go in person to a Walmart. Yeah. They have something that can destroy your precious vinyl. Oh, jeez. On the oh, no. vinyl, vinyl goop. goop. Oh, no. Well, they should not. Don't three use stars. that. Do not use that. <laughs> is is this a known thing? I didn't know that vinyl goop yeah. was a thing. Yeah. It's not well, good. apparently, <laughs> you know, Anana is on Anana, the, you know, tip of what's cool. Yeah. Very trend and D. Okay. Um, All right. <laughs> by the way, I found a website that uh, says these are manufactured by TW Electronics. Okay. Had to know there was some sort of a. Oh sure. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. There's a license. That they're, going, yeah. Yeah. They're, they're just slapping the name on. So they're, they're, yeah. They've got some pipeline. If you go to the website. Slapping the name on. No. 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 If you go to the website, you'll see the stock version of the google tv remotes right yeah which website i posted it in the slack oh here. there it goes I'm, I'm, I'm moving it over to the T- doc too the tw electronics sorry about that book there you go 
It's in the dock now. Right, which these remotes are fashioned after, well, yeah, Google TV's kind of prototype yep. uh, style. Ooh, that one has numbers on it. Yeah. I want a TV remote with numbers. Anyway, that it concludes our investigative uh, <laughs> report of the day into this the is, on brand. This is why you want to want to watch or listen even on slow news weeks because we break on it down for you. We are on that. Oh, we are on 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 that. Okay, I think we've beat that horse to death. <laughs> Pretty much. Up next. <laughs> It's time for some emails. That's right. It's time for some emails next mm -hmm. because uh, normally we only do three emails and then we end the show. But we also normally have an apps block and there just really wasn't anything that compelling for there. And uh, so I was like, you know what? We got a lot of emails. Let's just answer them all. Basically, we're answering all of our emails. So Flo, you got the first one. I've got the first one. All right. <clears throat> this one comes from an anonymous. Ooh. <clears throat> Ooh. Why do you only consider the big name or popular Android powered brands? In doing so, you neglect covering great products and products that many times fully meet the requirements of what you claim to be missing or you are looking for in your commentary. Example for flow. Last show, you lamented on the lack of a powerful Wear OS watch implementation. Have you ever looked at the specs, functionality, and value of the Mobvoi Tick Watch 3 Pro? If you did, you would discover, sold in the USA, a perfectly good Wear OS watch that checks all the boxes you thought Wear OS fails to do. There is also an LTE version already released in Europe and coming to the U.S. I paid $260 for this watch on sale at Amazon and IMHO, which stands for In My Honest Opinion, beats the pants out of any Apple watch and I have money left to enjoy life. Hmm. I use a wise 47 millimeter watch, $20 on weekends when I typically do a lot of manual work and don't want to wear more expensive items. BTW, which means by the way, this wise watch is not Wear OS powered, but it is the best oximeter for $20. You'll be amazed by how many people think this is an Apple watch. Wow. Thank you, Anonymous. The wise that watch. That was a really impassioned commentary. Um, and I, I typically get commentary like this about my opinions on Android wearables. Um, I appreciate that you have found a lot of utility out of those giant watches. Unfortunately, these are my wrists. They're really small. They're so they true. Um, I've seen them. I've seen them in person. They are. They're unusually yeah. small. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and also just another thing I want to show you is that I switched over to a 10 keyless keyboard. The review of which you can read on gizmodo.com. I posted it last week and Without that wrist pad, I got to tell you, wearing a watch is really hard when you're typing 2,000 words a day. So I prefer a smaller watch. And as it stands, there's nothing in my vein that I like <laughs> from Wear OS that is in the 42 millimeter style. Right. But I appreciate your opinion and I encourage everyone to send their opinions so that I may read it semi-dramatically on air. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate your semi-dramatic reading of that email. By the way, you can imagine I was very annoying in junior high because that's how I would read when we would do like class reading time. <laughs> anyway. They were like, don't ask Flo to read. <laughs> uh, yeah. The Wise Watch, yeah, that's that's an inex inexpensive watch. It's uh, Well, someone in chat was saying it's now $26, but that does look like a lot like Potato, the Apple Watch. Potato. I mean, I haven't tried it myself, yeah. Yeah, but it's like, $26. it's also part of an ecosystem that's not, look, I keep talking about Samsung because that's why it's, they make the number one Android devices in the world in terms of sales numbers, because yeah. people really like the stuff they offer. But and at least a $20 oximeter, which, so you know what? Burke, in all um, actuality, some people might need that. And that's why I encourage yeah. you to keep writing us because we'll read this stuff on the air and let people know, you know, your anecdotal experience with these things that we don't have. Yeah. I mean, it I might, would never. It might be a horrible to... watch, though. It's agreed. 
Yeah, but maybe somebody needs it for a really specific situation, a health situation, and I appreciate. Thank you, Anonymous. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it's a really great point, too. Um, yeah. at, at that cost, you can wear a watch at a time when you don't want to, you know, because that's one of the things that I worry about in wearing a watch is like, how often, like, I'm a clumsy guy. How often am I just walking along and, like, my wrist hits something and that could be the time that it, like, you know, puts a large gash through the screen of... my mom did that to her galaxy active too and i'm gonna tell you it's really gnarly <laughs> yeah like that doesn't go away and it's yeah. on a small screen and the scratches yeah it's gonna really be impossible to ignore so having a, an inexpensive watch that does the things that you want you know as like your swap in watch for moments like that it's actually a really smart idea 20 yeah. you know, in the 25 dollar price range i you know they you i don't know that there are a whole lot of other wearable options you know in that price range so that's a pretty great choice also it's worth noting very quickly before we move on that ant has actually reviewed the wise watch on victor says on how oh hands on hands on hands on wellness wellness um, thank you okay what i apologize uh, for not knowing that off the top of my head hands <laughs> i didn't know that wellness. Well, this was a little while ago. Hands on Wellness is no longer, um, but it appears, I, mean, I think I'm finding the right one. Yeah, it is. Okay, so episode 22 of Hands on Wellness. So twit.tv slash H-O-W uh, 22, and you'll find Ant's um, deep dive into the Wise Band. That's the Wise Band, unless maybe I'm, I'm missing out on the Wise Watch, so... Maybe this is different. Maybe he has another one that's the wise watch. And if so, I apologize. But uh, anyways, thank you, Victor. We tried. Cool stuff. All right. Brent V in Washington State says, I thought I would share my thoughts on rugged phones. The topic that never dies. I carry three cell phones. Yes, three. One personal Verizon Wireless Galaxy S20 Ultra. One work region uh, Verizon wireless iPhone, boo, he says, and a Sonom XP8. I work for a government Sonom. agency. Yeah, I know. I work for a government agency that is responsible for fighting wildfires. The specific region I work in uses iPhones, and I also carry the Sonom for AT&T FirstNet usage. It is a decent phone, mild specs, and does its job. I have dropped it out of a truck several times on dirt, rocks, Yikes. and sand. Still chugs along like a champ. I would not use it for a personal daily because I am a spec nerd, I guess. But it is it is yeah. built well and serves a purpose. The only gripe is the dual SIM card slot. I am not sure if it is a Sonom, AT&T, or government deal, but that does not work. The dual SIM apparently does not work. Uh, being able to use my first net SIM and my Verizon wireless region SIM in one phone would be awesome. Carrying three phones is not as cool as it sounds. I can't imagine that carrying three phones is very cool, to be honest. I would have a, I even have a hard time when I have to carry around two phones. If I'm reviewing a device and I can't move my SIM into the review device, so then I need like my phone for phone things, and then I have to have the review device in another pocket. Um, like I just I don't enjoy that. Some people thrive in that situation, uh, you know, and, and make that happen. But I I am definitely not that person. So as as SIM cards have gotten smaller, I've gotten less interested in doing that. Oh, it's okay. All right, Ber Burke was inspired. <laughs> as sim as sim cards have gotten smaller that has gotten less and less interesting of an option yeah um but this sonom is uh, any phone with the little antenna bump <laughs> yeah you know you're I, getting extra coverage that way yeah, exactly. i really yep. liked in the video for our video watchers were running the sonom product video and there was not only the rugged phone but being held by a rugged hand and a rugged glove yeah and that's how you know it's rugged yep. so, yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> you could tell it was really sweaty around there. Yeah, They'd be working hard. And he just threw um, that phone. I will say, I, I noticed there's no women holding these phones. Yeah, true. The the, yeah. the rugged branding um, always assumes man. Yeah, you're right. Uh, not see, but not always because Steel, the makers of one of the what I am told is one of the best chainsaws on earth. Um, they they make chainsaws specifically for women who just want to do small prune jobs. So I you know I know oh. that there is a market out there for us. 
I mean, I suppose that could be a woman's hand in that glove. We just it don't could know. be you're right. Yeah. Maybe you're just assuming Maybe. it's not. Yeah, it's <laughs> a very you're right. Glove. She only had a, lar- a size large glove to wear because that's all they ordered for <laughs> right. all the men on staff. They didn't consider the women. Because no, exactly. They only order the men's glove. I'm sorry, sorry, lady. You have to wear this. That's a thick yep. phone. I tell uh, you. Yeah, and I thick. mean. I'm uh, I'm I'm I can't help but scrutinize the OS and realize this is an old old version of Android. So I don't know if it's been updated or what, but this is not a new version of Android by any stretch. But it's built to work, built to last, and built to serve. So at least there's that. Thank you for writing in, Brent V. All right, next email comes in from Captain J. Captain J. Captain J. Um, Captain J. And he says, uh, Ron mentioned he got an LG smart washing machine. I almost bought it at Home Depot. I had a choice between the LG model and a Maytag smart washer. In the small print on the Maytag model, it stated that using a subscription service for the, uh, for the smartphone option uses. Oh. That was weird. The LG, the LG model had no details. Uh, so basically, the Maytag model had a subscription for using their smart services, and he didn't get clarity if the LG one does. Ron, does the LG model need or have an optional subscription? If so, how much and what can you do with it and without the subscription? Also, did you get the model with a spindle tower <laughs> in the center or without? Are you happy with it? Looking forward for a response um, on air soon with or without trumpet sounds. Unfortunately, Captain J, no trumpet sounds for you because while we did love to hear from you, this was not the email of the week. <laughs> I tried to sneak in. Uh, a Burke was sound. not prepared because yeah, yeah, it wasn't in the was. dock. To be fair, <laughs> I just wanted to give Captain J a there, there it is. There's your there's your trumpet. <laughs> um, so uh, minor correction there, Captain J. I, I actually did not buy the LG uh, washer. I bought the LG dryer. My dryer broke, and I was mulling over getting a washer and dryer to have the set. And ultimately, I decided that my washer is working just fine. So let me just replace the dryer now. And when the washer breaks, I'll get a new washer later on. So I got the LG dryer. Um, there is no subscription for using the LG Smart Home app. Um, Burke, I put a link in the doc if you want to show it to the folks who are watching. But um, uh, LG ThinQ, T-I-H-I-N-Q, yep. total smart home control uh, all in one app. Yep. Uh, and basically they have one app that collects all the smart home controls for all their different appliances. And for the dryer, you are able to, uh, select specialized drying cycles based on fabric type, as well as yep. monitor. Uh, you can monitor when it is done. Uh, you can remotely start and stop your dryer. Um, and you can, uh, monitor the cycle to keep things from getting wrinkled and that sort of thing. It's not, you don't need it. You don't need it. It's fun. It's neat, but you don't yeah, need it. <laughs> I I have the washer and dryer, and um, I only use the app because I like the notification to know when I need to go to the garage to switch things. Right. But other than that, it doesn't work unless the washer and dryer are actively on. So somebody has to physically turn it on. You can't like log in and look at it from the couch, or at least I haven't set mine up to do that. Also, it does have one subscription service, for Amazon. So if you want to like add in um, an Alexa uh, integration, and I'm so sorry to whoever's smart speaker just got uh, pinged, but you can do that. And then that way it'll like send you detergent after it's noticed how many cycles you've washed. That's it. Hmm. My washer and dryer don't have an app. I feel it's fun. It's fun. I just didn't, I didn't want to walk to the garage to figure out if stuff is ready. Yeah. There's bugs in the garage and in the winter it's cold in the summer it's too hot. And which is fair and like my dryer is yeah. in the basement and I don't I can't hear when it's done but like yep. we will also we also don't do laundry I don't do laundry that often enough and like it just it's fine. It's fine. It's neat. It's fine. So, uh you can hook it up to Google Home though to the assistant without a subscription. So you don't need that. Um, can you so ask yeah. the assistant, uh, the Google home, how much l- time is left on the, yeah, yes. drive? yeah. Okay. That's, yes. that's yeah. handy. Yeah. That's nice. essentially what it is. It's just yeah. basically like notification that the, the cycle is done and you could do some like, you know, cause, cause it actually gets pretty, like I laughed at all the different modes because you can change like the length of the dry cycle, the temperature, like all, and, and there's all these settings, there's a towel setting and all this, just, just dry the clothes, just dry the, <laughs> just dry it. 
Be, so, but you can yeah. you can tinker with those settings if you wanted to. Um, if you really wanted yeah. to get into if it, if you really don't want to destroy your clothing, take it to the dry cleaner. Yeah. So, or conversely, if you want to destroy your clothing, take it to the dry cleaner because I've gotten some clothes back that are mangled Fair. and lo- lost buttons and all that stuff. So, <laughs> your mileage may vary. Fair. Whatever works for you. But so, I absolutely detest owning any clothes that require dry cleaning. I just I can't do it. I I will all my all my work shirts my button up shirts I will take to the cleaners because um, I, I felt like that was a a sign of success. Yes, <laughs> right. that's what my I reached that's what the my level where practices. I, yeah, exactly, exactly. And so like I'm you know I'm happy to spend the eight bucks to bring my shirts because I and because the thing is like I can wash my shirts. It's the ironing that gets me. Yeah, it's the pressing. Like it's the you know like and so I did Steaming. I did for years. I ironed my own shirts and I'm like no I can I can outsource this. Yeah, so, fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Thank you for writing in, Captain J. Uh, all right, and we've got, well, we've got another slew of your emails coming up. Uh, reminder, AAA at twit.tv if you want to send us an email. Um, 347-SHOW-AAA if you want to leave us a voicemail. Joel, however, sent us an email and said, Just finished episode 526, and I am left wondering. I've heard little on what the 4100, topic, talking about the Snapdragon Wear 4100 chip, uh, will look like on this next iteration of Wear slash Tizen slash Fitbit. Mobvoi is the only one that's using it as far as I know, and they've been curiously quiet. Damn. Have you heard anything? What's your take? And I'll get to the rest of the email in a second. Um, I have not heard anything that's directly correlating the Wear 4100 processor with the future Wear OS Samsung collaboration thingy. Um, There have been some leaks. Ice Universe did leak some information about Samsung's upcoming Galaxy Active 4 watch. And in that leak, he confirmed... I I should say he or she. I don't know who Ice Universe actually is behind the moniker, but... um, Yes, Tizen Wear OS, of course, uh, because all of their future wearables are going to be that, from my understanding, Um, but that it's going to have a 5 nanometer processor, and the Snapdragon Wear 4100 has a 12 nanometer process. The Samsung, by comparison, Samsung's Exynos 9110 has a 10 nanometer process, Um, and this one, supposedly, is going to have a 5 nanometer process, so it's going to be a huge upgrade that, you know, could result result in uh, better battery, uh, improved performance, that sort of stuff. Um, but if that is true, then it seems unlikely that that at least that particular watch is not going to be running the Wear 4100. If there's no watches that ever come out with a 4100 ever again, that would be really weird. I mean, even though I fully realize that that, that processor has been out for has it been out for more than a year at this point and we still have only one watch actually running it which it is just bizarre but i have to imagine yep. other watches are going to get on on that as well um you know by the time the other watches start using it it's already going to be like 2 years old so you just can't win in the world of Android which is wear. why i'm not wearing one on my wrist there you go one of one of many reasons potentially oh uh joel also mentioned in his email he said, uh, oh, and the black hole totally holds up. If anything, watch it for the 80s tech aesthetics. At least you can understand Vincent. You can't understand the other blue and white droid from the other universe without a translator. So apparently we <laughs> all need to watch the black hole because it, uh. it, it holds up. I'm not sure okay. I believe you, Joel, but I'm, I'm down for uh, the challenge. I'm telling so, you, um, Maximilian is the best. The evil robot is it's so It's really awesome. cool. He's still, he's still menacing. And so here's the thing is that like it's on Disney Plus now. You can watch it on Disney Plus if you have that app, if you subscribe, or you can rent it from YouTube, uh, Amazon Prime, whatever. It's all out there for three ninety nine for four bucks. Take a flyer on it. Watch a great sci fi movie. Like what 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 I feel like those of you who and I'm this audience, you all probably know this, and so I'm preaching to the choir here. We're all nerds. We like science fiction, but. After the, the success of Star Wars, you had a parade of wannabes yeah. that came out like over the next five years, right? And Black Hole was definitely in the 
well, Star Wars is hot. Let's do something like that from Disney. Right. And uh, and it is it's <laughs> fascinating. It's fascinating. So yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. just looking at some of the screens from you know the shots, it just it looks so damn cheesy. Like I'm sure at one point it it looked very cutting edge and everything, but the the sets and, and then props and everything just look hilarious. I mean. I, I like I like the context that Ron is bringing. We're tied yeah. to space converged. And it's yeah, and it's, it makes sense when you watch it. Like you watch it from that perspective. Yeah, could be an interesting uh, thought experiment, Jason, for one and of keep, the afternoons where you have some time. Yeah, and keep in mind that it is star uh, amongst the cast uh, are Anthony Perkins, yes, Ernest Bo- uh, Ernest Borgnine, and Roddy McDowell, right? So it's not like it's like some people you've never heard of, right? It's got the, it's got Ernest Borgnine, like come on. So. <laughs> It's got some uh, some high sh- uh, high level talent there. Yeah. 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 Yep. Uh, yeah. True. Cool. Well, thank you for uh, writing in, Joel. Appreciate it. Uh, Ron, you've got the next one. I do have the next one. I wish it was about black hole, but it's not. Uh, Soham writes in and says, "I'm from India, and things are getting worse every day." Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I know. I've been. It's tra- It's tragic what's happening. Um, he says, however, it's during the pandemic I got to listen to a podcast that came across all about Android, and I'm loving it. Being an Android fanboy from my school days, it's a pleasure listening to you covering all sorts of gadgets, operating systems, etc. However, being a data analyst, I'm into coding and use platforms like Python, RStudy, etc. As far as I know, that's not just that's just not going to happen on Chromebooks. Don't you think the scope of Chromebooks are really limited? Like, it's neat that they're super cheap. In fact, student school stuff can easily be done on any Windows device. So why do Chromebooks exist exclusively? I would like to listen to what you guys think about this topic. Like, why aren't devs making IDEs to run Python and other coding languages, which can ar- already be used on Mac, Linux, and Windows? Um, first off, Soham, so glad that you're listening. So glad that we can give you a little distraction away from the state of the world. Hopefully, things get better soon. Um, as far as Chromebooks... This is my pro. This is I. I've had the same problem as you, not from a developer standpoint, but from a media standpoint as a media creator and things like that. Chromebooks always inherently felt just falling short of being completely useful. Um, now, Jason, I feel like you're the one who spent the most time with the Chromebook as a daily driver. Um, do you think that Chromebooks are limited in this way? That's that Soham kind of brings out, like it, like. It, it, you're not going to get people adopting it if you can't do all the things that they need to do, like developers, right? If you can't develop on it, then what's the use of the device? Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like Chrome Chrome OS. You know, uh, you know, reminder: I'm not a developer, so actually, a lot of this, I'm kind of like, uh, I don't know why or why not. Um, but I feel like Google has made some some progress in in opening up Chromebooks to allow for certain things that it wasn't before. For instance, you can install Linux on a Chromebook. Um, and you know, that would be one way to, to kind of get around that. But is that using Chrome OS specifically for development? No, I feel like, like off the top of my head, I feel like there are some examples where, uh, it used to not be possible on a Chromebook, but now it is, those examples aren't aren't coming uh, to mind off the top of my head. Uh, Cousin Jaw is pointing me to Python anywhere. I mean, that's that's the challenge, right? Chrome OS is really limited to to the web, and so yep. you need you know a site or some sort of web tool in order to allow that to happen. And uh, it's a great it's a fair question. I don't know why there isn't more development happening there to enable that. Maybe at the end of the day, it's just not the right tool for that job as much as somebody might want for it to be or, or maybe it is. And uh, yeah, I don't I don't know the reason why people aren't making those tools. Um, But I think it's a great question for people who are really familiar with this sort of thing. You know, uh, AAA at twit.tv. send us an email response like if you if you feel strongly either way that it should be or you know what's what the what is going on in that realm on chrome os let us know and we'll read it next week yeah it's tough it's tough because it definitely is a whole world that i'm adjacent to but not like totally in in with it um CodeAnywhere.com is a bra- to your point, Jason, is a browser-based ID that you can use. Um, and just you know, like doing a quick Google search, it seems like there's some other things out there, like uh, Pygame lets you work with Python on Chromebooks. Um, so stuff is out there, whether it's browser-based. The other thing also is that if you have access to a Linux machine somewhere, 
like a desktop somewhere that you're set up, you could SSH into that box from your Chromebook and then use the IDE tools that would be on that Linux box. So that's another option as well, too. Yeah. Um, so like there, there are some ways to f figure it out, but it is not native in the way that you want it to be. Right, right. right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If what you're looking for is that native uh, aspect, you're yeah, you're not going to find it as easily. And yeah, cousin of John Chad is kind of confirming, you know, what I was, what I was mentioning the Linux, uh, on a Chromebook, which is in beta right now. Stable is kind of coming soon. Uh, it's, you know, uh, oftentimes it's called Christini is the name of the project, uh, bringing Linux beta to the Chrome OS. So it exists. And if you do that, you have, a you know, that opens up your options tremendously. Oh, interesting. I just different. found, I just found, and, and Burke, I put it in the in the doc if you want to show it to the video folks, on installpython3.com slash Chromebook. Um, it's basically shows how you can run Linux on Chrome OS, which then allows you to run Miniconda to install Python 3. So, you're, it, Jason, it's what you're saying, which is turn, turning on the Linux beta um, mm -hmm. in, in the Chrome OS and then leveraging that to install Miniconda to be able to run Python. So, like, there you go. yeah. You know, there, there's some interesting stuff there. They're they're hacks, they're workarounds, but like it's it's they're out there. So yeah, yes, very they're interesting question. There. Anyone who knows though, AAA at twit.tv knows deeper than than what we're yes. talking about. Let us know. We'll read it next Please week. Please do. Flo, you have the honors. Oh my gosh, we're finally here. We're finally reading this week's. Email of the week. Hooray! Here we go. <laughs> I'm going to try really hard not to read this badly. Um, okay. <clears throat> My name is Gianmarco Canello. Damn it. Okay. <clears throat> My name is Gianmarco Canello, and I'm a 26-year-old automation engineering student from Italy, University of Bologna. I would like to start a discussion on smart home products we all know and use. Why should they all connect to a cloud service to work? Can we get a better and more private use from them? I was moved by these questions and created Prometheus, a private smart home thermostat. This thermostat is able to retain all the smart functionalities we love, such as remote control and scheduling, but also remain private by connecting only to the local home network and not sending any data to a remote cloud service. This was a university project. See, picture taken with my pixel, and a proof of concept. All of this made me think about what really happens when we ask Google Assistant to turn on a simple light. The request goes to a remote Google server, then to the smart home maker service, and finally comes back into our home to execute the command. I think the future might be that all the smart home related commands remain confined into our home network. What do you guys think? P.S. I'm also currently looking into finding an industry that can provide me with an internship to develop my master's thesis. I would really appreciate a shout out in the podcast. Let's see. What emoji is that? Uh, big smiling face emoji. I'm willing to send my CV to anyone that requests it. So anybody <laughs> who's looking for a whippersnapper who just sent us this very like, I didn't even consider this in the years that I've been covering the smart home that like this is something that would just be a thing that you could like a Plex server for the smart home. That's essentially yeah. what right. Yeah. Creating your own hub, is creating your suggesting. own like IoT hub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. I mean, it's It feel I feel like this would still be extremely enthusiast and only something that our audience would feel comfortable, you know, sinking their fingers in. But I like the idea of this, like taking back control from the assistants that have sort of. Um, hmm, how should I say the steam rolled their way into our home? I mean, they keep putting a free nest mini in everything. I mean, it's True. a, it's a, it's a fair question. Like, uh, why, why not bring it in? Why? I mean, when you actually map out what bring he's talking home? about, uh, assigning, you know, a, a voice command that request goes to a remote server, back to the smart home maker service then finally comes back seems like a long way to travel and a lot of you know steps for the privacy minded a lot of steps that it uh or stops along the way that maybe doesn't need to happen but you're right this is i mean for building something like this total enthusiast uh realm but there have to be projects out there there have to be some projects out there where someone is saying hey you can roll your own iot 
server that's private or maybe there isn't and if there isn't i'm kind of surprised that there isn't and uh jim marco you should you should uh yeah you should you should make that a reality for for everyone you know package it up in a way that's that's consumer friendly and everything and i think you've totally got something i think i think that would appeal to a lot of people especially right now yeah something like tasker but that people could just use to set up their own smart home sign me up yeah Absolutely. That was just, that, that that was accessible and usable and not overwhelming. Hundred percent. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, interesting. And then uh, customer jaw has been on fire in the in the IRC. It really has. It's like uh, yeah, like <laughs> look, oh yeah, check this out. Uh, he he was posting a link to Home Assistant Hass dot io, which I'm assuming is something similar to what. Uh, like I'm just looking know, at now the I website. Wanna, like... it's, it's hard for me to parse it and talk at the same time but well i'll give i'll give cousin aja credit by the way not to take a take away from the stuff that he's added but he's not only uh killing it in the chat but also in the discord (laughs) he's busy yeah he's a he's a busy multiple uh, screens i see yeah it's like one of those you know like crazy wall of places to interact with folks so well yeah i I mean if you're this is like me and mechanical keyboards. It's like if you if you've been doing it for fun, then you know how to point people to the stuff yeah, that sure. you painstakingly like had to work yeah, through. Sure. And Absolutely. now we have a bunch of stuff to play with. Yeah. And then I have a bunch of stuff to play with. Now I can't say I don't I didn't know about it. <laughs> Cousin Aja is schooling me right now. <laughs> schooling. Out of sync. Or sorry, not out of sync. Is it out of sync? Yes. Out of sync and chat also brought up a really uh, a very valid point in this discussion, which is that IoT protocols are pretty much pro- proprietary at this point, which makes it which can make it very difficult for someone to just roll their own system uh, and control these devices if they don't have the, the links into these devices in order to do it. Um, so... Yeah, it would need to be, as he says, a universal open source protocol. So, um, come on, let's get there. Let's make that happen. Somebody, somebody can start that, and uh, I think you're totally onto something. I'm just kind of surprised it doesn't exist already. That seems, I don't want to say obvious because I didn't come up with it, but it seems like something that somebody would have figured out at this point. So, it's yeah. because we think of stuff like the smart home as an infrastructure thing. I mm. think this is my. But we think of it, I feel like, as an infrastructure, so it seems bigger than something that you could just control. Yeah. Well, well than even like a media server, because a media server you can wrap your hand around it. Like, yeah. okay, I put MP3s, whatever, into a hard drive, and the hard drive is connected to the internet. But like, the actual Internet of Things is so right. goes Talked out of the house and back in. Right. They're still fighting so. over standards. Yeah, that's true. I mean, yeah. Zigbee, well, you, you guys know. have read. About matter. Mm-hmm. Yes, we've discussed yes. it. Yeah. We've even discussed yeah. it on this show, this very show. Yeah, it's true. I wrote about it. So, yeah. yeah. So this is a to be continued uh, email. B. But um, C. Good. Good luck with everything you you have going, Jim Marco. And yeah, so he he put out the call <laughs> saying he's willing to send his CV to anyone that requests it. Um, you know, normally I would strike that from the from the uh, the email before we read it, but I left it in there because it's like, sure, if someone has a, has an opportunity for Jam Marco, uh, email AAA at twit.tv and and spell that out to me, and uh, with your permission, I can pass that contact information over to Jam Marco. I'd be happy to do that. Uh, that's it. Do you want to do the closer wow. flow? The the closer for that email because it's it's yes. Fun too. Thank you, Jam Marco. That made you our email of the week. I didn't want to. I didn't want to rob you of that opportunity. No, that's okay. <laughs> all right, we've reached the end of this episode of All yeah. About Android. Had a whole lot of fun. I I really enjoy the the shows where we get to answer uh, yeah. more than just a couple of emails. So, uh, thank you, News, for not being so crazy this week. We really do appreciate it. Um, let's see here. Flo, what do you want to point people to? Mm, news is not so crazy, but I'll tell you, there's a lot going on in the back end, folks. Um, hey, something that's Android related. And um, I apologize, Burke, I didn't link this in the chat. But yesterday, an uh, article went up on gizmodo.com about the Pokedialer. I had found somebody who figured out how to like make 
the dialer app look like a Pokemon fight about to start. So I asked my editor if I could write about it. And I did. So <laughs> Which one is this? It's, is this the the incessant spam calls? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. So what it does is Here, I'm put, let me look um, it. it's not actually the Pokemon game, but it lets you collect coins and stuff so you can unlock your favorite shiny Pokemon so that they answer the phone for you. Oh. Because listen, that that yeah, the pixel automated uh, answering feature, it's not making the spam calls go away. So you might as well, might as well have some fun. So I wrote about how to do that with an app called Pokey Dialer, which we can do on Android because Android is open, unlike iOS, which would require you to jailbreak your iPhone to make this happen. Hmm. So thank you. <laughs> Pokey Dialer. Yeah. Right and on. the developer, I mean, the developer like tweeted my article and stuff. So the developer is clearly updating this app. Like I, I vetted it. So nice. Consider this my version of the app arena. There we go. On Gizmodo.com. See, people say we don't <laughs> review apps in the show, and we really don't anymore. But sometimes we recommend them, and there you go. <laughs> yes, at Gizmodo.com, where at Gizmodo. I am employed. <laughs> there you go. Important. <laughs> Important. Uh, thank you, Flo. Uh, what about you, you, Ron? Guys. Well, speaking of employed, uh, I don't normally like uh, talk about it that much, but I do want to share. Did work on a cool at the day job, a cool project that launched today. If you're looking for another podcast to listen to, um, over at Marvel, we launched a podcast called Old Man Star Lord, uh, which is a post-apocalyptic future oh. story uh, of uh, Star Lord and Rocket and the Guardians That's of the nice. Galaxy and stuff. Um, available everywhere you listen to podcasts on Pocket Cast, Spotify, uh, Google Podcasts, iTunes, all that, whatever else you listen to, Sirius. Um, fun stuff. So that was cool to work on. Um, and also you can follow me at RonXO on Twitter and on Instagram. So check it all out. Radical. Thank you, Ron. Sure thing. Uh, big thanks to Burke behind the microphone and for that slow fade. That was a nice slow fade. That was sweet. It was mm -hmm. good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's that's the speed right there. That was Just a good slow. fade. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. good. Just Thank a you. real slow, like the, the old like Grass Valley switcher. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, right. like the, yeah. When movies <laughs> moved good. at a, sna a snail's pace in the yeah. very, very early 80s, late 70s. Yeah. 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 Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. Also, also, big thanks to Victor behind the scenes uh, for you know editing and, and bringing you the Anthony. show each and oh that's right that's right uh, well I'm gonna thank Victor anyways because you know what yeah. today was his day uh, off I agree and Victor's he, always here for us thank Look, you yeah, for taking the, the day slack. off Victor. I just wanted to not forget about Anthony yeah thank you I do appreciate that also big thanks I was gonna say it big thanks to Anthony for thank editing you, Anthony. Uh, and turning around the show instead of Victor you. Anthony you're cool too there we go. Um, let's see here. Tech News Weekly is another show I do on this network. I also have, like I mentioned earlier, the NAS, the Network Attached Storage Project that's going to go up on Hands-On Tech tomorrow at some time. I still need to shoot it, but I'm, I'm working on it. This, this whole holiday thing really threw me off, so I'm a little behind, but you should get that tomorrow at some point at twit.tv slash H-O-T. After Jason sleeps for half an hour. Uh, yeah, well, that's that's tonight. I'm going to sleep for a couple of hours, then I'm going to wake up, but I'm going to work on it. Um, Club Twit, if you didn't know, it's our ad-free tier, subscription uh, tier for uh, for this week in tech and all of our shows uh, on the Twit Network. No ads. You also get exclusive Twit Plus podcast feed with a lot of uh, pre- and post-show content and other content, but that's the really fun stuff, and a members-only Discord channel. Uh, that we talk about all the time on these shows. You probably heard us talk about it. Seven bucks a month, uh, twit.tv slash club twit. It is a lot of fun and awesome, and you should check it out. That is it for this week's episode of All About Android. Really appreciate y'all tuning in and uh, downloading and watching and listening, however you got this show. We appreciate that you did. Uh, we publish every Tuesday evening at twit.tv slash AAA. And uh, you have everything you need to know about this show by going there. So check that out subscribe, watch on YouTube, whatever floats your boat, and we'll see you next time on All About Android. Bye, everybody. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt, and I want to tell you about my show, Hands on Photography, here on Twit TV. Each and every week, Thursday, that is, I like to sit down and share with you the best tips and tricks that are going to help make you a better photographer. And it's not always about Photoshop. It's not always about just having the 
biggest and baddest and bestest camera, it can be the simplest of things like leave your eye open when you're looking through the viewfinder. All of these simple tips can really help step your photography game up. So subscribe to the show today. That's twit.tv slash hop. And I look forward to talking to you soon.